Good morning and welcome back to Other Worlds Wednesday on Gaming with ADHD, where we take a look at role-playing games and their associated products. Now, today I wanted to take a look at the Deck of Many Worlds from Paizo Publishing, designed for the Starfinder role-playing game. This is a 100-card deck designed to let you quickly come up with planets for your players to explore, complete with story hooks, sentient races, and threats. Now, before we get started, make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified when new content is available. I try to cover a variety of gaming subjects from miniatures games, board games, card games, and role-playing games, and I'd love to have you come along as we explore all sorts of gaming. So, if you've been following the channel, about a month ago I reviewed the Starfinder Galaxy Exploration Manual. That book was designed to help game masters design sandbox campaigns and planets for their players to explore. But two years ago, Paizo released the Deck of Many Worlds with a very similar goal, but a very different way to do so. Now, while the Galaxy Exploration Manual uses charts and random tables and lots of dice to come up with uh, uh, to come up with the the stats. Uh, the, deck of many, uh, the Deck of Many Worlds uses cards to determine those stats instead. Now, these products are not the same thing, so I wanted to take a few minutes to show you how to use the deck to create a planet, and then discuss a little bit about how the deck differs from the Galaxy Exploration Manual, but how they can also be used uh, together. So, with that said, let's take a look at the deck. So, it is a basically a, a double-sized deck. You're going to get 100 cards for, uh, for designing your planets. You also get 10 cards, which include, well, first off, the open game license, uh, and then the instructions on how to use the deck. So, it's going to give you a description of the cards, both front and and back it's going to give you instructions on how to create a world oops sorry i had it upside down so as you can see the instructions are basically you know front and back on one card and you know pretty concise uh and then explanations of all of the content that you find on the cards themselves uh, one thing that I did like is, you know, so this is going to tell you about the story hooks, but then they also give you some tips on how to just use the cards to quickly come up with, you know, with a settlement or a city that you would find on the planet that you create. Uh, you know, rules for creating uh, an entire star system. But then also how to use this towards creating both a player character and a non-player character so just you know tips on you know what is you know what kind of a planet is it you know is you know how does how did that affect your character's upbringing were they abandoned there you know what is your character's relation to that particular planet so i really like that they put that in to uh you know into the deck so that there's there are more ways to use it than just you know creating a planet for adventures. So basically, to create a world using these deck or using this deck, there are five steps that you're going to take. Now the first one is pretty common. It's shuffle the deck. I've already gone ahead and done that, so that that way. You know, you don't have to just watch me shuffle cards. Now, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to cut the deck and you're going to take the new top card as the core of your planet. All right, so we're going to start here with the lava world. And let me zoom the camera out a little bit. All right, so we are going to make a 
lava world. Now, after you have your planet, you're then going to draw another card, and this time you're going to flip it over. And you're going to slide it underneath the first card like this so that it then modifies all of the values on this card. Now, you'll notice, we'll pull up this desert world as an example, uh, that not everything ends up in the same place. So in this case, the alignment values ended up in the same place. But whereas on our lava world, we have magic in this spot, on the desert world, we have a chord. For tech, we have magic, religion to tech, and a chord to religion. So basically, it helps keep all of the different values of the, the cards mixed up so that you don't end up with things in the same place. Now, each card is going to have two arrows pointing up, two arrows pointing down, and two neutral. So what this means is you have law versus chaos and good versus evil. Now this is the standard D20 alignment system. So you have lawful good, chaotic evil, uh, neutral. And so because we have the lines on this uh, on these, basically we end up with a true neutral planet. If we had an arrow pointing up uh, for good versus evil, then we would have a neutral good planet. If it was an arrow pointing down, it would be a neutral evil planet. Or if it was in the first spot uh, pointing up, we would have a lawful neutral planet. Or down, we would have a chaotic neutral planet. So uh, basically the... Uh, the, the line represents either neutral for alignment or mid-level for everything else. So a, you know, it would be a mid-level magic or mid-level tech. And so in this case, we have a low magic world, but a high technology world combined with a high religion world and a low accord world. So what this means is magic almost does not exist on this planet, but technology is very, very high. You know, for a lava world, I would assume that it has high technology because we would need, uh, we would need ways for people to survive on the planet. So we would need you know, high-tech shelters or high-tech mining equipment. Uh, think similar to Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, the, the final planet where Obi-Wan and Anakin are fighting. You know, similar to that. You're going to need technology in order to survive. Uh, with the religion, you know, obviously that could be whatever you want as far as why they have a, a high religion on that planet. But unfortunately, they also have low accord, meaning that the planet is not very peaceful. The different factions and the different places on the planet are fighting with each other for resources. Maybe that high religion value means that there are many different religions on the planet. And because of that, there's a lot of extra strife as well. So that's what you're going to do with your second card is you're going to, uh, you're going to take that and use that to adjust those values. Now you'll notice that you also have, uh, these are called constellations on either side. Uh, and those will come up here in a couple, uh, in just a minute. But then in the middle, you're also going to have a story hook. So this says the emitter of an eerie or distinctive cosmic song, its melody and rhythm heavily influencing the world's physical features, flora and fauna. Okay, uh, I did forget to point out here on the planet card, it's going to also give you the gravity, the atmosphere, and the biomes. So we have standard gravity, corrosive atmosphere, airborne, desert, subterranean, and thermic biomes. OK, 
okay? Then it'll also give you a little little description of the planet. Now, if you want, you know, if you if you want more than just the one story hook that's provided by the uh, alignment adjustment card, you can continue to draw cards and place them underneath like that. So now we're going to have a second uh, set of constellations and a second story hook. So in this case, endangered by its sapience magic or technology as it runs amok or outstrips their ability to control it. So we now have two different story hooks that we can use for our lava world. Now, the next, the next step is to populate this world. All right. So we're going to take another card and this time, instead of sliding it down on the bottom, we're going to slide it to the left. So we have an uplifted bear in this case from the alien archive number two. And those are the sentient races, or that's the first sentient race that is on this planet. Now, this is where the constellations come into play. Because it's going to give, basically give you a random number that you can use. So obviously we have a 1, we have a 4, or we can add them together for a 5. So, in this case... I'm just going to keep it at one. It's just the bears that have uh, that have come to mine this lava world. So, for the next step, we're then going to use the constellations on the right. And in this case, we're going to draw three cards, uh, just because I want extra ones, for our threats. So we've got the Necrovites from... The, the first alien archive. We've got the living apocalypse from the alien archive two. And we've got the Hobgar from adventure path number seven. All right, so that gives us our world, two adventure hooks, a sentient race, occupying the planet, and three different threats. So, what are the, you know, what are those threats exactly? Well, the Necrovites uh, were the race that used to occupy the planet um, until they all died from a plague and turned into the Necrovites. Uh, we've also got the Living Apocalypse uh, because, you know, it's, it's a lava world, so clearly it's, you know, it is unstable. So we have basically this living energy that's, you know, keeps the world churning. And then the Hobgar, uh, I will be honest, I don't know anything about them. So we will say that they are a non-sentient race, uh, but they were, you know, the, you know, they are a, a natural predator on the planet. So, uh, but that is how we get our world just using this deck. Now it does give you an optional rule that uh, if you want, you can create moons for the planet. And for that, they say to take two cards. You're gonna take the first one to be the planet. I'll zoom out a little bit. And then your second card will be to adjust the alignment and give a story hook for the moon. And you can do this for however many moons you want to give to the planet. Uh, but overall, it's pretty simple. And as you can see, in just a few minutes, I have an adventure, uh, I have some story hooks, and something for my players to do. So if I wasn't able to get the adventure ready for the week, yeah, you know, there we go. We can still get our game in. Now, as you can see, the deck is designed to get you a place to explore. Uh, but the detail can be a bit limited. 
Now, I'm not saying this as a negative, as I feel the product is designed to be used on the fly and something that can be used in very little space. Uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I have a very small uh, recording table for all of this. And uh, even still, I had it zoomed in to just focus on these cards. I'm using just a little bit of space. So, uh, you know, the to me, the Deck of Many Worlds is designed to basically keep the game going while you would use the Galaxy Exploration Manual to pre-make uh, pre a world, you know, prepare your game, uh, you know, either before the game starts or after the game when you have the basics for your world, you can then go back with the Galaxy Exploration Manual to flesh in those, the rest of those details. Uh, I, I realized that Paizo did develop the Galaxy Exploration Manual after the Deck of Many Worlds, but I think the way that they designed it is very good at combining the, the two products so that even though they serve a similar function, there are reasons to have both of the products uh, and that both of them have value in your collection. Now, that doesn't mean that the Deck of Many Worlds is perfect. There are a few things that you should be aware of. First off, there is a lot of information that you are going to need for other sources. Uh, the biomes are going to be in the core rulebook and the Galaxy Exploration Manual at this point. Uh, you know, but your sentience and your threats are going to come from the uh, the alien archives, uh, and as you saw, it's also going to come from some of the adventure path books. So if you don't have those, those are going to be additional expenses. The rule books are great because they're only about ten dollars a piece from Paizo. However, the uh, the Adventure Path books will run you almost $20 a piece. Now, it does give you an adventure, but if you just want it to, say, get the the, the Hobgar, um, you know, there's going to be, uh, you know, that, that's going to be quite a, uh, an investment just to make sure that you have that, uh, that particular race. So, first thing to be aware of. Uh... The other thing to be aware of is that there are rule books and uh, adventures that have been released since this deck came out. So it doesn't have, you know, all of the options that are available, uh, you know, for the random generator. Uh, with that being said, I think Paizo could easily release a supplement deck that does include, you know, content from the you know from the additional alien archives from the the other rule books that are coming out uh you know in the future so i don't know if they will do that but i think it's something they can do now in conclusion i do think the deck of many worlds sets out to do what it intended to do and that is to give game masters a way to be inspired whether planning in advance or while the game is being played I think it's a fantastically useful tool, not only for Starfinder, but any science fiction based role playing game that could benefit from random locations. Uh, and on top of that, for its price point, $20, uh, you know, for the, the, the actual published deck, uh, I believe you can still get a, uh, a PDF of it for, you know, for about $10 from the Paizo website. Uh, I think $20 is fantastic for a product like this. Uh, and I think it's a great deal as well. So with that said, what do you think? Have you used the deck of many worlds? How has it affected your games? Have you found, you know, have you actually found it to be useful? You know, let us know in the comments below. I'd love to get some more feedback. Um, you know, I have, I don't have a ton of experience with it. I'm just going off of, you know, how I've played around with it, you know, to get ready for this review. So if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like the content that I've been putting out, please absolutely subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun getting this out and I'd love for you to come along on, 
the, the different videos that I put out. So thank you for watching and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.